Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, I honestly have no idea what we did last time. I think we just walked around and found more conspiracies and secrets and mysteries, and it's probably going to all add up in the end in some way, shape, or form. In this episode, we're going to find even more mysteries, probably. Oh my god, we just walked off into the lake. Wow, we look at the size of that mansion. I bet you could get lost in there. It is impressive, to say the least. I'm sure that massive manor belongs to Mr. Anderson. So that's where Inspector Chelmy and his assistant went, right? I'd like to see this place myself. Can we go take a look? No, for now I think our best course of action is to gather what information we can find in the village. Besides, I imagine the Andersons have their hands full with the two guests they currently have. So I guess we can't go there quite yet, but we are just about at the end of our journey around the village, which is nice. Uh, two hint coins right there. I assume there is a third one somewhere around here. Not sure where exactly. This place also looks very similar to a certain area in Curious Village, if you know what I'm referring to. And this guy's got a puzzle for us. Erg. Hug. Phew. That should do it. Class A voice acting. Good afternoon. What are you doing there, sir? Me? Oh, I'm just doing a little fishing in this here lake. Sounds like a lot of work. Have you had much luck? Actually, that's a good question. Now that I think about it, how many have I managed to catch today? And of course, you gotta answer it in the form of a puzzle. Number 33, Fishing Net. You've cast a large net out in the pond to catch some fish. Every part of the net is in the water except for two ends which you're holding in your hands as shown below. The pond's surface is small, but it's actually wider underwater, so parts of your sunken net aren't visible from the surface. Assuming that there are no tears in the net and that its rim is constructed of a single length of rope that ends on the shore, how many fish how many of the fish visible in the pond will you snare up when you pull the net back up? Hint number one. Why not try sketching the parts of the net that you can't see, aka try. Hint number two. When fully drawn out, the net is one strange and complicated shape. <laughs> That's it, okay. Hint number three. Since the rim of the whole net is fashioned from a single piece of rope with no tears, take the drawing you did for hint one and count that number of fish on the inside of the net. There's your answer. The solution is a seven. That was actually a really good seven. Let's see if this works. It's the simple things in life you gotta look out for. Piece of cake. Or piece of fish. Woohoo! The little hall! Tonight I feast like a king. And we get a fishing net puzzle. Hoorah! Anything else around here? We can't really find this other third hint coin, if there is such a thing. So I guess we're just gonna head back. And hey! Chummy's over here now, that means we could probably go to the manor, right? Probably not. Oh, it's Inspector Chelmy. Well, look who it is! Hello, Inspector. Are you returning from the Anderson Estate? Mm, I don't know what you got that information from, Leighton, but you're as sly as a fox. As a matter of fact, I was just there, but the servants said Mr. Anderson himself wasn't home. They said the bloke is off presiding over the livestock competition. A likely story, I'm sure. I'm curious, what connection do you see between Mr. Anderson and the case you're investigating? Not that it's any of your business, but perhaps you can be of help. I'd heard rumors the bloke had tried to find this Elysium box in the past, so I went to talk to him. But when I got to the house, his butler told me he wasn't home and that I should leave. Can you believe it? I bet you a tenner he was just pretending to be out. I went out of my way to see the man. At least he could do is offer me a proper cup of coffee. But why would Mr. Anderson be interested in the Elysium box in the first place? It's anyone's guess, Luke. We won't know him more until we can ask him in person. I guess we better head over to the livestock competition that Mr. Anderson is judging. Hmm, fine. Let the blasted bloke judge his precious livestock competition, then. I won't be there. As long as, as far as I'm concerned, the whole thing's a frivolous distraction for the rich. Speaking of which, I can only assume his obsession with the box stems from his excess of time and money on his hands. If you see anything that might help this investigation, report it to me straight away, you hear? We are always happy to cooperate, Inspector. Now please excuse us. Sure, off you go. Come along, Barton. We've got work to do. Hmm, okie dokie, sir. 
All right, we better hurry back to the competition grounds. The professor looking floor designed to return soon. And this guy's new, and he's got a puzzle for us. Snirk! Yeah, yum yum yum. Um, Professor, I think this fellow here fell asleep standing up. Judging by his uniform, he must be a security guard. I wonder how his employer feels about his nap. That chin. Zzz, perimeter secure. Please confirm identity by solving this puzzle, Snork. Even in his sleep, they're all telling puzzles. Number 44, Tangled Ropes. Three ropes are tangled together with a single red rope. If you want, if you were to pull both ends of the red rope, a single knot would form in the middle. Can you figure out how many of the rope loops would get caught in this knot when it forms? Remember, even if you loop, even if a loop appears to have been pulled into the knot, you shouldn't count it in your answer if you can pull the loop free from the red rope with a tug. Kind of complicated, but okay. Hint number one. Carefully study how the ropes are wrapped around each other. In, an, in at least a few places, the ropes may appear entangled, but can actually be removed easily from the pile with a single tug. You've probably experienced this phenomenon before when untangling a mess of appliance wires at home. Boy, do I know about those. Like, I always, like, every time I clean up the sink and wires in my room, like, I always, uh, say to myself, okay, I'm only ever going to have one console out at a time, so I don't have to mess up with wires ever again. And it never ends up happening. I'm in a big sink and wired mess. It's really annoying. Like, I really hope that I live to see the day where everything is wireless. And I mean, like, everything. That's why I want more than any sort of other technological advance. Like, well, okay, maybe not as much as jetpacks or something like that, or a dog that can play video games with you, but it's pretty high up there. Oh, what are we talking about again? Oh, yeah, hint number two. Pay special attention to the length of red rope forming on a loop, as this portion of the rope will form a knot when pulled and is the key to solving this puzzle. Remember, any loops that aren't caught within the knot that forms don't count toward your answer. Hint number three. Do you see the yellow loop of rope? It may look tangled in with the others, but it turns out that when it's pulled, this rope will slip free of all other ones in the pile. Now, what about those other two ropes? So the solution is... None of them actually would get caught in the knot. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Good thinking, not a single loop will become truly entangled in the knot that forms. When you pull the red rope and form the knot, one loop will fall away, and the other two will hang from the red rope free of the knot. Correct answer confirms. Well done, Sir Snore. You must be some kind of mad puzzle genius to be able to talk about them in his sleep. Yum yums. I feel like Layton's jealous. He's like, I wish I could talk about puzzles in my sleep. Huh? I wish I loved anything in this cold, cruel world as much as Professor Layton loved puzzles. Boy, oh boy, I'm in a tight spot. What the fruit is he? Okay. I thought, like, his. Pu those are, like, super wide pupils, but no, his eyes are just closed. I wanted to make a clean cut in this board, but I got botched in. I botched it kind of bad. It's pretty much useless as is. Can you think of a way to turn the pieces into a solid square? Puzzle number 42, Board Splitter 1. Uh, in the UK version, it's called Board Cutter 1. And I think this might be a sliding puzzle. Wait, no, it's not. It's just a line connecting one. Uh, here we have an oddly shaped board. Since the board is rather unwieldy as is, you've decided to cut it into two pieces and rejoin these pieces to form a square. Assuming you aren't allowed to flip either of the pieces over once the board is cut, cut, where should the, you make the cut in order to achieve the above? Hint number one, the final square will be four units tall by four units wide. Hint number two, you have to cut the board in two separate places to solve this puzzle. Hint number three, doesn't that area around the hole in the board look like a good place to cut? Pretty straight and to the point, so the solution is uh, right here and right here. That's it. This should do the trick. Pretty short, sweet, and to the point. Ah. Wonderful. Wonderful, as Mr. Baldini would say. Woohoo, that did the trick. Thanks, now we can finally get back to the building in that shed. And we got another camera piece. I like that he has to, like, sentence that 
he says when he gives us these pieces like what anyone says when they give us like the camera pieces they just give them to us it's like oh hey you solved the puzzle thanks buddy and then they just throw a piece of a camera at us it's really funny but whatever uh you just go on this way uh, i just want to examine the people on the way to make sure they don't have anything for us but it looks like we're good to go my goodness look at this place Woo, we must have made it back in time to catch the competition if we've been informed correctly, Mr. Anderson is judging the entries. So he should be somewhere around here, right? Indeed. I wonder which of the gentlemen walking around here is our man. Uh-oh, it looks like the two men over there are getting pretty hot under the collar about something. I wonder what the matter is. And it looks like we'll have to talk to them ourselves. Just look at that mangy coat! Anyone with two eyes could see that, it's no bovine of mine. I know what's gone down here, someone swapped out my cow for this lemon! Well, that's not a lemon, sir, that's a real cow- I'm kidding. Uh, what do you want me to do about it? Can you at least point out which cow is yours? Now, how do you expect me to do that? Oh, bro, this is gonna get ugly. What seems to be the problem, sirs? This fella here seems convinced someone swapped out his prize cow for another. Also, this guy looks incredibly like... God, what's his name? The guy from Mice and Men, if you know who I'm talking about. Oh boy. And um, I'm telling you, that ain't no cow of mine. My girl's perfect from horns to tail. None of these cows have udders and it makes me sad. Wow, his name is Oscar and he's like a farmer. Okay. Uh, we can't ask, we can't start the contest without him carrying on, but I don't know how we could clean up the situation. I'll take care of this. I bet the cows would know if any monkey business went on. Oh yeah, of course. Why didn't I think of that myself? I'll leave this one to you, Luke. Oh, uh, excuse me, Miss. Can you help us out here? <coughs> I see. <coughs> If you're hoping for an explanation as to how Luke could talk to animals, uh, don't hold your breath. Did you find out anything of use? I sure did. If I had to sum up our conversation, it goes something like this. They said, this reminds me of a certain puzzle. Would you like to hear? Misinformation. <laughs> okay, at least we finally got our cow pun. Puzzle number 50. Five cows are grazing at a festival. Two of them are true moo cows, oh, the best milk, a breed that only tells the truth. The other three are no hay cows, a different variety that tells lies. Using the following statements from each cow, mark all the no hay cows and tap a letter to mark the cow below it. A says, D is a no hay, I promise. B says, oh no, C isn't a true moo cow. C says, a ain't a no hay cow, no way. D says, E's a no hay cow, if I ever seen one. And E says, B's definitely not a true moo. This is very funny. And I like the one cow showing his butt. Hint number one, don't overthink this one. Assume a variety of possibilities and try each one. AKA try. Hint number two, assign a breed to a cow and then run through all the cow's statements to see if they are consistent with your findings. You should come across the solution soon. Or one like soon. Hint number three. Let's assume for a moment that a cow that cow A is a true moo. If you assume this to be true and go through your statements for each cow, you should come to the conclusion that you must have three true moo cows and two no hays. Since you know this to be false, you know that your original assumption must be incorrect. So we gotta mark the no hays. Using the following statements, uh, find all the no hay cow. <clears throat> find all the no hay cows. All the no haze would be E, C, and A. Just leave it to me. Maiden's apprentice strikes again. That's right. Cows A, C, and E are no haze. If you assume each cow to be a no hay or a true moo and run through each of the cow statements, you'll eventually realize that the statements are true when cows A, C, and E are assumed to be no haze. I wish there was something funny along there, being like, Moveless or something. It looks like these two ladies swapped places while waiting for the competition to start. Actually, well, I guess they... That puzzle specifically didn't tell us the answer as to whose cows got swapped. 
But we find out which ones are telling the truth and then which ones didn't. Then, like, Luke tells us, I guess. Oh, you betcha. Look at that build. Also, look at look back at Oh, God. <laughs> Sneeze. Look back at all the cows. Like, they all looked distinctly different. They had, like, human hairstyles and everything like that. Like, how could you not tell them apart? That's my cow, no doubt. So everything's okay by you? Better than okay, Key, with my darling back. I'm a shoe in for that blue ribbon, thanks. Wow, Luke, you sure have a way with animals. Aw, oh, that's nothing really. Look over there, you two. They're about to announce the winner. And the winner of this year's Dropstone Dairy Crown is... Oh, top 10 anime betrayals. Or I guess I should say top 10 anime betrayals. Oscar show stopping Milk Maven Mutilda. Watch that be the one that the guy actually had before. Hold on now, you mean to tell me my sweet Marimu didn't take first place? Too bad you slapped your cow back, Clabber. If you kept quiet, you'd be the winner, eh? Wow. I was robbed. The competition must have been rigged. Rigged, I tell ya. To think it went through all that trouble to get his cow back and then ended up losing because of it. Yes, I suppose it goes to show that things in life don't always go as planned. Right you are, Professor. Say, shouldn't Mr. Anderson be around here now? It's going to take some effort to find him in a crowd this dense. Let's look around a bit. Uh, is it on the screen, perhaps? We can talk to this guy. Lopez, you ever heard of the old saying, the clothes make the man? Well, from the look of you, look of your duds, I'd say you've got your act together. So try this puzzle on for size. So that's why my life is so horribly put together, because my clothes are trash. Puzzle number 39, a change of clothes. Men A, B, and C each started off with paints and shirts of a single color. A wore red, B wore blue, and C wore white. Then they were blindfolded and swapped items of clothing. After they took off their blindfolds, here's what they said. A says, no one's shirts and pants match. B says, it looks like C is the only one of us who didn't keep any of his original clothes. C says, I don't know if I like these red pants. Change their clothing by tapping on them and assemble their current outfits using the clues given. This is a very funny puzzle, just like the poses of the three old men. Hint number one, you know that C's wearing red pants and isn't wearing anything he was previously, so his shirt has to be blue. Hint number two, C's the only one of the three men not wearing any of the items he was wearing originally. Hint number three, A and B most, A and B must both be wearing a single piece of clothing, shirt or pants, that they were previously. The solution is that A is wearing a red shirt and white pants. B is wearing a white shirt and blue pants, and C is wearing a blue shirt and red pants. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Nicely done. Look at these happy old timers. Wait, what did that say at the end? Is like I thought that was a gag or something said funny. All that settled, all you have to do is place your remaining white item in the right places in your puzzles. Okay, it was just like, I saw a dot dot dot, so I thought it was going to be funny. It was going to be like, now give everyone their pants back or something like that. There's nothing tackier than when your shirt and pants don't match. That's fashion rule number one. Rule number two, no one can pull off sequins. But with that sweet suit of yours, you're golden. No swanky nightclub will turn you away, I guarantee it. Laying at a nightclub. I've been actually kind of wanting to get Professor Layton's outfit, just like an orange dress shirt and then like that brown coat brown pants like do i no i don't have brown pants and i my god i've wanted a top half for so stinking long i um i almost got one because of gray showman of course but i almost got one recently but it was 120 dollars. i was like i don't want to because like, i don't have any of the other clothes for it so like there'd be no good opportunity for me to wear it oh uh, maybe one day i guess we never did manage to meet mr anderson did we yes what a pity I had a feeling he'd provide us with the lead on the Elysium box. Hey there, fellows. We never met before, have we? I heard you chatting about Mr. Anderson and thought to myself, hey, I could help. Here, I'll point him out. Puzzle number 48. Who is Mr. Anderson? Of course, he's going to make us solve it in a puzzle. 
I just saw Mr. Anderson around here a minute ago. He shouldn't be too hard to spot, what with the beard and hat. Yep, he's a real gentleman, and he always looks spiffy with his cane and that dapper little bow tie. Oh, and he doesn't wear glasses, in case you were wondering. Look, there he is now! Using the clues in the statement above, can you find and circle Mr. Anderson in the crowd? This is a whole lot easier if you just played the game before and you remember what he looks like. Hint number one, keep in mind that all of this information is describing Mr. Anderson as he was a minute ago. Things can change, so don't rely too heavily on that description. Hint number two, the wind and dropstone seems exceptionally strong today. Hint number three, over there, see the guy chasing after his hat? That's him. The solution is this guy. Actually, when I looked at this at a first glance, I thought he was wearing a hat, but no, that's just a shiny head that's like sort of in the same shape as his hat. But it's this guy right here. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. And we're over a thousand picarats, which is really cool. Good eye. It looks like the wind tried to carry off Mr. Anderson's hat. Oh my god, he looks adorable. Good day, sir. Might you be Mr. Anderson? The one- Oh, uh, what voice do I want to- I was going to give him Barton's voice, but... I don't know, I feel like I've been abusing that voice too much lately. Do you on only, my friend? And whom do I have the pleasure to be speaking with? The name is Herschel Layton. My friends and I have come to this, find this town- My friends and I have come to this town in search of the Elysium Box. I thought a man of influence such as yourself might be able to offer some- uh, us some direction on how to read the script. The Edition box, you see? Why would you want to go chasing after a thing like that? So you're familiar with it then? Familiar? No, but I do believe my dear mother once searched after the very box you speak of. Interesting. Please elaborate. Ah, oh, well, my birth mother died when I was very young. The mother I speak of is actually my mother-in-law, Sophia. She founded this village way back when. A kinder soul I never met. Sharp, too. I married into her family, but she treated me like her own flesh and blood. Seeing how I never knew my own mother, I suppose it would be fair to call Sophia my real mother. Even after my wife passed on, Sophia continued to treat me as one of her own. Mother Sophia looked high and low for that box, but she never did find what she was looking for. So she made efforts of her own to search for it. Fascinating. Tell me, where might Sophia be now? She... she left us last year. In her last days, she spent a lot of time holed up in her room writing. Sadly, I never found out why she was so intent on getting her hands on that box. I see. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Well, my mother may have not may have had knowledge of the subject, but she's gone now. Now you know as much as I do. I regret that I couldn't be more help to you, sir. Not at all, Mr. Anderson. I've learned a great deal from our conversation. You have my thanks. Oh, one thing before you go, Mr. Layton. Please take a look around you. These picturesque hills, these happy people, Dropstone has been blessed with so much. Sophia turned this place from nothing into a village full of warmth and camaraderie. Dropstone mustn't ever be allowed to withdraw, to wither and fade like so many other villages. After all, too many sacrifices were made to make this place what it is. Ah, oh, forgive my ramblings. Once I start talking, sometimes I have trouble stopping. Enjoy your time in Dropstone and be well. Good day. I didn't remember him being such an important character. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to give him a ridiculous voice. That was a beautiful story, now I'm sad. Hmm, well, I guess that's another dead-end lead. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Luke. It appears this village is in inextricably linked with the Elysium box. I also find Mr. Anderson's choice of words interesting. What do you suppose he meant by sacrifices? It looks like our, mis our mystery only leads to more mysteries. The professor looking for a side of Oh, hey, that was actually kind of new.